we are building a truck in Canada for Canadians, and yet we have to listen to U.S. EPA rules to build a truck in our own country for our own country, and I don't think that's fair. They want to tear up our trucks. They say we can't sell them there, but yet we still have to listen to their rules to build them here. That's wrong. Everybody, it's Member of Parliament Bob Zimmer in Parliament with my colleagues uh, Ellis Ross and Dave Bexty with Edison Motors. Uh, maybe uh, introduce yourselves. Yeah, so we're Edison Motors and we're trying to build hybrid electric semi trucks here in Canada. British Columbia, Canada has a rich history of truck manufacturing. Between Kenworth and Vancouver, Pacific, Hayes, Western Star and Kelowna, we built some of the toughest trucks in the world for the most demanding operations that were some of the most reliable, that lasted, that worked, that you could fix and repair. Our mission is to bring that back for the North American customer. That is what we are building at Edison Motors. Those are the values we are bringing. Good manufacturing jobs that pay well, that don't have to get shipped overseas or down south. A truck for the working person, built by the working person. That's what we need back, that's what we're bringing. Electric vehicles just have better torque and performance. And what we're doing is we're really bringing that to an industry that's just been unable to access this technology, right? I mean, there's electric cars everywhere. So why aren't there electric trucks? Well, I think it's because you needed a bunch of truckers to build it. And we're seeing that you're having a few problems getting approved by this Canadian government. Maybe explain what those problems are. Yeah. So. We're trying to meet the government's mandate. They want all everything electric right. or plug-in hybrid by 2035. So we'll start building plug-in hybrid semi-trucks. We'll start yeah. building them in Canada. And we cannot get approval from Environment Canada because no legislation exists to allow it. Because, because they're hybrid, they have a generator. So they're fully electric vehicles. And as the batteries get low, the generator fires up and recharges the batteries as you're driving. Right. But you're not legally allowed to put a generator into a truck if the generator powers a truck. It says it needs to meet on-road certification, and that meets generator certification, which ironically has lower emissions than on-road. Right, right. So we have lower emissions, but it's just not approved because there's no rule to allow it. Crazy. Ellis. You know, the thing about this is that uh, I tracked these guys from BC. We went to the BC legislature together. Different problems. <laughs> Hope we got them resolved. But the, the one thing I like about this is that the market and the customer is not being forced financially to right, buy their product. Right. They can take off globally if Canada develops some kind of policy to allow them to build their trucks right. for they, Canadian they, customers and global customers. They don't need a mandate to be successful no. selling their electric trucks, right? No, the customer is there, they want it, and they can go Australia, they can go Europe. In terms of markets and supply, we can actually open this up yeah. To, yeah. to a larger audience if, if Canada gets on board. Yeah, if we got on board with the right rules, we do have demand from Australia, New Zealand, some places in Europe, and we could do it if we were just allowed to get the engines we need to put in the trucks. So you, so you said the numbers, you, we're not just talking to like two or five trucks. <laughs> uh, I just heard you say how many, and it, it will we, shock the viewers, how many are actually sort of on order. So we have 4,000 pre-orders for our pickup trucks with 4, deposits. 4,000. And we have, we cannot keep up. We had to turn down um, our semi truck orders until we have uh, the first batch built because we can't get them out fast. Oh, right. We're just building a new factory right now. So we just built the, we built our prototypes. Yeah. We showed them to customers. We sold trucks to customers. We're building the first trucks that we're ready to sell to the customers. Yeah. And we're trying to get it over. That's why we need our national emissions mark or we can't legally sell it to the customers. So now we have trucks sitting in our yard yeah. that we can't deliver to the customers because we're stuck in this regulatory circle loop. Right. Can you comment about a made in Canada truck and needing made in Canada regulations? Yeah, so our truck is made in Canada. Canada has a rich history of truck manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Kenworth, Western Star, Pacific, Hayes, the best truck brands were all made in Canada. And then the 80s and 90s, the American companies bought it, shipped the plants down to the States. We lost our truck manufacturing and we're trying to bring that truck manufacturing back here. But maybe the last question for me. Is, uh, we know what the issue is, and you have to. You're going by EPA standards the way the Canadian government has set it up. You're have they're making you go to the U.S. to get approval, which isn't going to be cheap for one. And and I would think that Canadians would expect the ability to approve uh, electric trucks made in Canada to be approved in Canada. Maybe just explain what the the crux of the problem is. Correct. You're a bit confused, right? We're using in Canada EPA regulation when in fact 
you know, Canada should be exporting to the globe. Right. So what we're proposing is to actually allow both EU and EPA regulations, just like Australia, to even the playing field to get right. us going. And and right now we should be able to be approved in Canada, correct? Yeah. We're almost there, working towards it. Hopefully ECCC provides its approval soon. Okay, right on. Could you comment at all about the smaller vocational trucks and what kinds of applications and trades might be able to take advantage of that once they get off the ground with yeah, the conversion kits. We're seeing, so we were loggers from British Columbia, so we set out to build a logging truck. And then more people started reaching out from the construction industry, and they're really, really seeing it. We're seeing higher and higher power requirements as more things go electric. There's not a lot of generators on site. And one of the, we found that the fuel savings was huge for that as a main reason, but we started getting these external benefits for construction sites. There's a lot of places, let's take a concrete truck, for example. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to run their batching plant 24-7, but a lot of cities have noise bylaws. So what these guys can do is they can shut the generator off, roll onto site electric, unload quietly on electric, and then they're on the way back. They fire mm -hmm. the generator up to recharge to keep that truck growing 24-7, keep that four going, mm -hmm. and increase the productivity and efficiency wow. of the construction sector, something that you previously couldn't do due to the noisy noise, uh, the noise violations. Right. Hey, last point though, uh, it's an incredible technology, but it's off the shelf technology. Can you explain that? Yeah, so one of our core ethos was, I was a big fan of the repairability. Owning a small business with a few trucks, being able to repair our trucks was super important. As we've seen more and more planned obsolescence happen and losing the ability to repair, we decided we were gonna build our trucks with off the shelf parts as much as possible. So we went out and we found parts and we use those parts. We don't design custom parts. We have our software relatively open so that people can look at it, fix it, work on it. I believe you should be able to fix your own truck. Right, right to repair. Any last comments? Well, I think with the recent news that the US is now tariffing made in Canada trucks, we are building a truck in Canada for Canadians and yet, we have to listen to U.S. EPA rules to build a truck in our own country for our own country. And I don't think that's fair. They right. want to tariff our trucks. They say we can't sell them there. But yet, we still have to listen to their rules to build them here. That's wrong. Right. And it's going to cost you, even to go through the process, millions. It would cost us probably three, four times more just to go through the regulatory approval in the U.S. than we've spent with our entire company in our four-year history. Wow. That Put that into perspective. There it is. Well, folks, uh, a great Canadian story, a great British Columbia story. We hope this uh, current government will agree with us and you guys uh, will get your approval. So, again, thanks for coming to Ottawa. Thanks. appreciate you guys being here. Thanks, and, uh, thanks for having all us. All the out. best to you. Yeah. <laughs> we just keep yeah. falling Ellis around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming, you guys. Thanks, thanks. thanks. guys. Good. Thanks. Good thanks.